the most dangerous thing you can do to a child is to not expose them to an element of risk and danger. It's probably the best school that I have ever been to. Mr Fair Club is the best teacher there is. We're about giving children real experiences, giving them a lust for life. Welcome to Danger School. So, our fire is lit. We're going to do the fire safety rules. Where 10 year olds use guns and knives, roam through the marshes alongside water buffalo, and cook on open fires. When the smoke gets in your eyes, uh, move away and try and stand behind someone. That Risks are embraced, the free spirit encouraged. Yet the authorities, Ofsted, a health and safety executive, have all praised West Rise Junior School. Okay. It gets the best exam results in the area, consistently above the national average. Reeds mean deep water, so you don't go in the reeds, OK? Two thirds of the children are on free school meals. The majority live on the council estate just opposite. And head teacher Mike Fairclough passionately believes in offering them experiences they wouldn't otherwise get. We're the only state school to do things in this way, and uh, the children themselves are from a, from a, 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 a sort of varied demographic, and, um, and we feel that we have a responsibility to give them as many opportunities as, as they deserve. My dad taught me to shoot, I went hunting, I, I lit fires. Um, I had a magical, amazing, uh, quite feral childhood and it's that kind of thing that I want to be able to give to these children here. So Alfie, what have you made here? I've made a fishing rod. Okay. So He's been credited with turning the school around since he joined 12 years ago. Sit, pull that tight. Good boy. The long hair, fur coat and open shirt are unusual for a head teacher. But don't be fooled by his hippie image. Quite, quite he demands good behaviour. And at the same time, he believes these adventures outdoors change children for the better. If children are excited about coming to school, if they're being inspired and infused by being outside, then that has an impact back in the classroom. If we weren't having an impact academically, then all of this would be a waste of time. And finally, ta -da. I just made it. How did you make it? Uh, with a very big stick, some string, and I found oh, Mr. Fairclough helped me got a fawn, and I had some bread eggs on it. Cooked some of what's left of our meal we ate. So, if you imagine that that in one day, how much that one pigeon has eaten? Yeah. This is all about building grit and resilience, and that means being comfortable with plucking and cooking animals in the wild. Yeah, look, and pull that straight off that skin. There you go. God help us. Farm manager Alex Richards has encouraged them to overcome any squeamishness. Can you smell that? It smells a bit vinegary, doesn't it? So they're totally confident. Even with Boris, that's the dead squirrel, looking on. The ethos here is that country pursuits are not just for the privileged. Teaching shooting is undoubtedly controversial. Back. Yes. Top. Okay. But they insist this is about discipline and ensuring children first come across weapons in a responsible way. Well done. Life changing. Why was it life changing? Because uh, I've never done it before. In the first experience, it just changes my opinion of shooting. It's just amazing. It's a really good adrenaline and it's a nice feeling. Activities like this would often be out of reach for those who aren't wealthy. The school makes it possible by being resourceful, getting local clubs involved. The land itself is rented from the council at just under a thousand pounds a year and farming on it makes the school some money. This isn't something every school can do though, is it? They don't have acres of land. Every school can do this um, because even if you've got uh, an inner city school with a small playground, all you need to build a fire is two metres by a metre and the fire doesn't move around. So actually everything we're doing here with Forest School on 120 acres can be replicated in the smaller urban environment. But there are some moments you can't quite replicate. The school is also home to a herd of water buffalo. Come on! 
Apparently they're not just hungry, at this time of year they're also frisky. But farm manager Alex Richards knows how to deal with them. Once a parent governor, now he's Mike's sidekick. I've thought to myself, you know, long hair, hippie, you know, you know, what's the school coming to? Bear in mind all my kids have been to this school. Um, but after sort of six months getting to know him, different different person, the kids he's done asset, you know, he's done really well for the for the school itself and the kids, the kids have changed. Um, and he's given uh, the school a new lease of life, really. Amid rumours about band conkers and snowball fights, they think society has ended up limiting expectations of children and make the case that government bodies are actively encouraging schools and parents to take managed risks. The cotton wool culture of Britain has uh, got a little bit out of control. It's only really people's own sort of limiting beliefs and a few media myths that people have invested in which has stopped children from having these sorts of activities. So yeah, we're bucking against the trend, um, but also we're not doing anything that we're not allowed to do. In fact, we're being supported in doing it. And so he urges others in the education system to embrace danger, to cultivate creativity and to give children the chance to explore.